Ah, what a beautiful day to be locked inside your home like a prisoner. Guys, I really don't care anymore. And honestly, at this point, you know, why even bother covering all of these news stories? The media can throw whatever nonsense it wants at the public and they will blindly believe it. Oh, and by the way, we're releasing thousands of prisoners because everyone's getting sick. Tee hee. Before we get started guys, please sign up to my newsletter below at frank stefanocom and I will send you guys a flyer that you can hand out to your community to hopefully make a positive change in this world. If this was the case, if prisoners were getting sick in jail, why are you releasing them? So they can go around and infect more people? What kind of sense does that make? The truth, unfortunately, relates back to the new cell towers and 5 grams infrastructure. Every single video I've been making these past two weeks, for the most part, relates back to these godforsaken towers, these LED lights, because we are suffering from radiation poisoning. Prisons and correctional facilities tend to have large amounts of cell towers and antennas built on their grounds. I have actually never seen uh, a facility without uh, a full cell structure on their grounds and it just isn't a coincidence they're able to weaken and manipulate the prisoners with this radio wave weaponry more than 1500 new york city inmates released during crisis <laughs> oh man look at that thing imagine if you were uh, married to that yikes Mayor Bill de Blasio's office announced Friday that more than 1,500 inmates have been released from city jails in three weeks, shrinking the number of incarcerated to its lowest level in 70 years. Defense lawyers have filed dozens of petitions arguing that the continued incarceration of their clients endangers their lives and violates their constitutional rights. At the request of the Legal Aid Society, Justice Mark Dwyer freed 18 Rikers Island inmates, including accused murderer Pedro Vinet Garcia, who allegedly stabbed his girlfriend to death. It really is crazy what you can do when you control the media. Massive psychological warfare operation that allows you to say and do whatever you want. Literally put murderers back on the street and no one bats an eye. As the coronavirus, formerly known as COVID-19, began its stranglehold on New York State, it crept into Rikers Island, a sweeping complex near LaGuardia Airport that is one of the largest jail compounds in the world. The virus infected the first correction staff member on March 15th and an inmate three days later. The arrival of the virus prompted city officials, defense attorneys, and advocates to call for the release of inmates, since jails are notorious breeding grounds for germs. New York City's Board of Correction, which oversees the Department of Correction, instructed the city and criminal justice agencies to work together to immediately remove inmates at higher risk from COVID-19 and to rapidly decrease the jail population. Let me get this straight. Jails are notorious breeding grounds for germs. Uh, yeah, to my understanding, a jail or a prison is technically the perfect spot to be for an outbreak. Nobody really comes in or out, same staff every day. Technically speaking, you know, there shouldn't have been any way for the virus to get in the jail and, you know, why would these correction officers be so close to the inmates all the time? Makes you wonder how little people think about this stuff. They're literally locked inside quarantined, yet the media insinuates that it's dangerous by saying, jails are a notorious breeding ground for germs. Really? I I've never heard that before. You know, the media seems really good at putting words in people's mouths and, and creating things as if they have always been like that. You know, the terms like social distancing, all this BS. I just want to throw these people in ditches, man. I swear to God. Another news article gives us some more hints. As COVID-19 fears grow, 10,000 prisoners are freed from overcrowded Philippine jails. Barely a month after a Philippine official publicly declared that jails were the safest place amid the deadly pandemic, at least 330 inmates have tested positive for COVID-19. The International Committee of the Red Cross noted that a significant proportion of the country's prison population suffers pre-existing heart and respiratory diseases, which may exacerbate the severity of the coronavirus. I wonder if the reason they have respiratory and heart issues is because there tends to be cell towers and these people are suffering from radiation poisoning, of which respiratory issues and heart problems are the number one symptom. Social distancing is impossible in Philippine jails. There is so little space that inmates at the Quezon City Jail are said to sleep in shifts. As of November, the country's seven national prisons and 900 local jails housed more than 215,000 inmates in a space intended for just 40,000. Okay, 
please explain to me how prisoners have to social distance when they are literally locked up, sealed off from the outside world. That's literally what the word prisoner means. They've been quarantined amongst themselves. It even says, Philippine officials publicly declared that jails were the safest place. I guess they realize the new cell towers are getting the prisoners very, very sick. 70% of Texas prisoners tested have the coronavirus. Experts say it's time for more testing and fewer inmates. Some of the nation's biggest COVID-19 outbreaks have been in prisons and jails, and they can quickly spread to surrounding communities. Are Texas prisons doing enough to protect inmates, staff, and the public? Really? I got an idea. Let's see if there are any new towers. Oh, look. Two new tower applications detected as of today. There's one tower directly on top of the prison to the north side, and another right by the prison on the southeast side. Then we have multiple antennas sharing a high tower structure. I mean, are there going to be lawsuits filed against these telecom companies for crimes against humanity? How long are we going to allow our government to slowly poison us with radiation? We might as well be living in Chernobyl. Apparently, spraying chemicals in the air, poisoning the food and water supply, and injecting us full of chemicals and antibiotics has not been enough. So let's take a look see at the Rikers Island cell towers and can you say holy shit look at all those towers directly southeast of Rikers Island and then there's a large cell tower directly on the island plus you have a dozen antennas on the island itself I really don't know how obvious it has to be for people to realize what's going on. I've probably made a dozen videos over the past month pointing out blatantly obvious problems with this new Wi-Fi infrastructure, and I really don't want to. Do you want to go with the dozens of explanations the media is giving you, or the one simple one that people are getting radiation poisoning? I'm sick and tired of every video being focused on this nonsense, but as I've said multiple times, if people don't wake up and do something about this, we're going to be screwed. I'm still taking things day by day and I encourage you guys to do the same and be optimistic, but if we just sit around and do nothing, then their fate is in our hands. And you guys have seen the predictive programming, they're saying there's going to be a second wave. They literally tell us what they're going to do. Uh, some of you guys were asking me why I put the Diablo 4 trailer at the end of the video I posted earlier this week. It's because that trailer is focused on the willing. At the end of that cinematic, one of the guys says, the evil necromancer says to the monk that came for knowledge. And the monk was praying and saying that he didn't want to be there. And after the necromancer said, you came for knowledge, he said, yes, I came for knowledge. The monk gave up his free will and then they sacrificed him. These people in charge know that, you know, the laws of this planet have to be, they have to tell us what they're going to do. They tell us there's going to be a second wave. You know, they literally told us the test kits were tainted. If they tell us what they're going to do and we allow them to do it, that's essentially us giving up our free will. Although it's not obvious to the brainwashed sheeple, you know, what they're doing in the media, they're literally telling us what they're going to do. They've literally told us they've put these towers up and they're going to kill the bees and the birds and it's going to compromise the food supply. They're telling us and we have to be smart enough to acknowledge that by accepting what they're doing is giving up our free will. And that's why we can't do that. That is exactly why I posted that Diablo 4 trailer. The point is that Necromancer convinced the monk to give up his free will with a false promise of knowledge. You know, I mean... This is probably a, a more in-depth discussion that I can go into in another video and, and summarize it better, but that was basically the gist of it. So uh, thank you guys for joining me today. As I said earlier, definitely sign up for the newsletter, frank com. I'll send out the, uh, the Wi-Fi flyers again for you guys uh, if, if some more of you sign up. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. We call the Open your eyes. Eternal light protects me. Eternal light protects me. Eternal light protects me. Eternal light protects me. Eternal light. There is no light here. You came to the darkness for knowledge. Surrender.
surrender. Speak the words. Call her home. Thy way opens by the blood of the willing. We call thee home.